How is it going everyone? I am Dylan, this is All You Can Board, and today I'm bringing you seven more new games that I am super excited about that are on the horizon coming in 2022 or 2023, but we're always looking to the new games because there's so many new games, so much to get excited about. So I'm gonna go over them all, what makes them exciting, Sorry, there's, <laughs> I gotta show you guys this because otherwise you guys aren't gonna understand. There's uh, something I need to grab here. So we were, uh, we were playing board games yesterday and uh, Carlo was, uh, was over and he wanted a uh, tissue and I actually don't have Kleenex boxes around so I had to grab him uh, a roll of toilet paper and so there's just a roll of toilet paper sitting on my uh, little like window sill over here that I just noticed as I'm filming which for some reason just made me laugh. Uh, so yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put this right here. I'm gonna put that right there because you know some people don't watch the full video. They they watch like certain sections or there's certain games they're interested in. And anyone who didn't watch this section at some point is gonna notice that there is a roll of toilet paper just on my shelf here. And someone in the comments is gonna comment, "Hey, wh why do you have a roll of toilet paper on your on your shelf?" Because they didn't watch this little section. And if they did, I'm gonna count on you guys to respond to it with something witty, something funny. I'm gonna leave that to you guys to respond to. But if you watch this section now, you're in on this uh, super hilarious joke of why there's this roll of toilet paper here. So. So anyways, let's move on. Uh, I'm gonna talk about my first game that I'm super, super excited about, and I actually just found out about this. I'm not sure when they revealed the box art for this, and that's really all we have with the, uh, just a short description of the box art, but it is super exciting, and that is Title Blades, The Rise of the Unfolders, which is part two in the Title Blades series. You'll see up there, you can probably see part of it. Uh, I have the original Title Blades, which is Heroes of the Reef. I absolutely adore it. It made my list. Uh, I can't remember if it was two or three on my list, or was it even, no, it wasn't, it wasn't one. It was two or three on my list of top to, uh, top five games for 2020. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Title Blades. The art is gorgeous, and I was always intrigued by the fact that it said part one on the box, what that meant and what, what part two was gonna look like. It does look like at the we I think we had some confirmation or Carlo told me that basically it was looking like the subsequent parts were going to be different genres that take place in the same world. So the description says it's a dungeon crawl based on the world of the unfolders. Players will use deck building and deck enhancement to propel their characters through a story arc, battling frozen foes and growing in power. Um, I am a huge fan of dungeon crawl games, legacy games of that style with campaigns and you know where your your heroes are either like growing in power or you're getting new cards as you go, whatever the case may be. This sounds absolutely up my alley. I pretty much would have been in for whatever part two is gonna look like because of my um, impressions on part one and how much I already enjoy the world and the, the artwork and everything involved with it. This has just put this up to one of my most anticipated games. Really the only downside here is that it's listed as a 2023 game. I believe that there's gonna be a Kickstarter or a crowd, uh, crowdfunding campaign next year, but we likely won't see it delivered till 2023. So it'll whet our appetite. We'll find out all this stuff about it, but we probably won't get our hands on it. Um, but it's just a super, super exciting looking game because of how much I enjoyed the first one. So it's it just immediately propelled to the top of my list. I'm really, really interested what they're gonna do with this world and everything that they've done with the world building in this dungeon crawl um, asset because it's just, it's gonna facilitate story um, a little bit better. I know in this game, there is this world building, but it's not this ongoing campaign where the story can evolve and grow. Whereas a dungeon crawl, that potentially can happen. So I'm curious to see exactly what it's gonna, what shape it's gonna take. Is this gonna be a really legacy focused uh, campaign where everything changes each time you play and you're playing with the same people or is it a dungeon crawl that just lasts that one session and you're bringing other people back? Is it gonna have more of an oath mechanic where you know you can play these single sessions but the game will evolve a little bit so that each one feels a little unique? I'm just very curious to learn more about it um, but I am super, super excited. Again, the artwork on this already like looks beautiful just like the original. Um, I cannot wait to, to find out more about this when the crowdfunding campaign launches uh, and I absolutely cannot wait to get this in my hands. It's gonna be one of those ones that like, it just every so often I'm gonna be searching up being like so is this still on track for 2023 is this still on track for 2023 with all the delays we've seen because uh, yeah I, I already know that it's gonna be a really tough to wait for this one so that is Tidal Blades uh, it's essentially Tidal Blades 2 or the rise of the unfolders next one is a game called Wormholes now this is from AEG and it's designed by Peter McPherson who also did Tiny Towns which is a game Carlo absolutely adores I really enjoyed as well it's in Carlo's collection so he's played more of it um, but this game sounds really 
really neat. So I, I trust this designer already because of how much I enjoyed Tiny Towns, um, and AEG has released a lot of uh, really good games that I enjoy as well. Uh, but the premise of this game is what's really hooking me and, and on top of those things uh, already. So um, it's basically a pick up and deliver style of game um, where it says players are collecting passengers uh, based on planets uh, and having to deliver them to different planets. So I don't know if that's supposed to be like you know, almost like a crazy taxi-esque thing if you're familiar with the video game where you're uh, basically picking up different passengers and delivering them to different planets as if you're a taxi service. But the interesting thing here is, and where the title Wormholes comes in is that this pick up and deliver mechanic is different and evolves as you start placing wormholes or getting wormholes to basically make your travel more efficient and quicker. And I think that that's where the competition is gonna come in is how you're utilizing your wormholes to make this pick up and, de pick up and deliver go smoother and quicker than your opponents to be able to get more points. So um, very, very cool from what, I, what I've what uh, read about it. There's not a lot of other information out quite yet, but again, my trust in the designer um, and what I'm reading from the concept uh, of the game is really what's getting me excited about this. It lists that there's also so uh, one of the mechanisms that it's also going to have a modular board, which is exciting. I don't know if that means that the planets will end up in different places every time you play. So you're not always being able to say, I already figured out the most efficient route. And it's this, 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 that you're going to have to adjust to where the planets are and know how this is going to change how you approach this specific game compared to the other one. I think that's a great idea if that's what they mean by that. And again, just like having to develop a network and routes to be able to do this pickup and deliver system, but having that change based on how you are utilizing your wormholes. I don't know if you're able to use other players' wormholes. Um, you know, if I place a wormhole, if that's not accessible to all the players, that could add a whole other wrench into things. So I'm very excited about it based on what I've read. Um, and again, obviously the designer attached to it. Um, I cannot wait to find out more. This is a 2022 game, so hopefully we won't have to wait very much longer. And you know right now, as soon as we can get our hands on it, we're definitely gonna have some content on this channel. I know Carlo is just as excited about this one. If I hadn't included it on my list, I'm sure the next time Carlo does one of these videos, it would have been on his. So that is a Wormholes from Peter McPherson and AEG. All right, next up, uh, another game I'm really excited about. And this one, I won't have to wait too long to get my hands on. Uh, this is Sky Tier Horde. So uh, there, this is a follow-up, but in a different genre to Sky Tier. So Sky Tier was a MOBA-inspired game. If you're familiar with like games like League of Legends um, or Dota, that was, it was sort of that converted into a board game. We, we covered a game called Cloud Spire on our channel, a similar um, uh, type thing, turning MOBA into a board game. Uh, so that was Sky Tier. Um, it looked very interesting. I really liked the artwork and, and you know, the playstyle from what I'd seen in videos on YouTube and things like that, but never actually played it myself. Sky Tier Horde is a follow-up that is a completely different genre, and this one speaks to me way more than the MOBA one. I'm not a huge MOBA fan. Um, I'm just more intrigued by it than anything, but this is actually a, a solo and cooperative card game, and it specifically says that if you play battlers like Hearthstone and Keyforge, that this is uh, a game that you'll find a lot of attachment to, and I play both of those games, especially Hearthstone that I can't seem to get away from, so it completely speaks to me already. Um, card battlers in general, like card games, um, whether cooperative, whether whether competitive, um, are always ones I'm interested in. You know, I grew up on Magic the Gathering. I play Hearthstone now. I play Keyforge. Uh, I play uh, Marvel Champions. You know, it just that's a genre of game I'm always going to be interested in, especially when new ones come out um, that, you know, either do things differently or are just master in a certain area of that genre. I'm always going to at least try them out. So Sky Tier Horde is one that I'm just really, really excited about because it's entering that genre. Um, we are going going to have content on our channel sooner rather than later for this because uh, we are expecting to be able to cover this for the actual ca Kickstarter campaign. So hopefully we're gonna, we'll get our hands on this a little bit sooner and be able to give you our full thoughts on it. Um, I am super, super pumped about this. What I've seen from the, the card artwork, I'm putting some of it up on the screen. Uh, the card artwork and the mechanics and everything. Uh, I, I cannot wait to play this one. It's neat that it's solo and cooperative. I'm really interested to see how well it plays solo because Marvel Champions is one of my most played, if not my most played solo game. Actually, it's definitely my most played solo game. It probably would be my favorite solo game as well. Um, and I'm curious with other, another card game coming in that is saying it has a solo component, or one of its main components is solo, how well it's going to do that. Because I'm always interested in other games that are gonna either, not necessarily replace Marvel Champions as a solo game for me, but more so just add that as another game I can play if I wanted to shake things up. I played a lot of Marvel Champions recently. Here's another card game I can play solo. It usually doesn't require a lot of setup to play card games solo compared to if I wanted to play a game like, um, you know, uh, Feast for Odin solo. I know I found another way to mention Feast for Odin. I do it in pretty much every video. Um, so it, it, that game would take a whole ton of time to set up on the table. I like games like this that, um, you know, 
allow for a solo experience that is more compact and easier to set up. So I'm super pumped about this. I cannot wait to play it. There's not a lot more to say because like I said, we probably will have a lot more content and thoughts on it when we actually get our hands on it. So that's Sky Tier Horde and keep your eyes on our channel to find out a lot more about it. Next up, uh, okay, so if you watched, like I mentioned before, the uh, top five games of 2020 I did, um, and more recently the, game, the video that Carlo did on his top games of uh, 2020 as well, um, you'll see that both of us brought up My City. Uh, My City is a game we absolutely adored. We both played it together. We did the entire uh, Legacy campaign. Um, we love Rainer Knizia as a designer, obviously, and uh, that game just combined Legacy with his style of game in such an elegant and simple way, but it was so effective we kept loving coming back to it. There is a new version of My City coming out that I only recently found out about, and that is called My City Roll and Write. Now, this is on here because I'm excited about there being a follow-up to My City, but I am also cautiously optimistic about this. And the reason I'm putting that on here is the same reason I think Carlo has some reservations about this, is that we both love Lost Cities. It's one of our favorite games, um, and yet the Lost Cities Roll and Write game that came out was sort of a miss for us. We, we, I could see enjoying that with someone who, you know, didn't play, doesn't play a lot of Roll and Writes and just wants a quick introduction, but it's not a game I'll ever personally come back to as a game I want to play with, say, Carlo or, or people I already play a lot of Roll and Writes with. So I'm cautiously optimistic because I'm worried that they're going to take the, co the beautiful concept of my city and all the stuff that made it great and dumb it down a little bit too much into too much of a simplistic experience like they did with Lost Cities. If that happens, this likely won't be a game I'll return to a lot. But I am excited because Reiner Knizia is still behind this as well. There's always, I, I usually like his games and the fact that my city is pretty unique and this one seems to want to carry over some of the legacy elements. I don't know that this is a legacy roller, right? It's not listed as such, but it does say that it's a dice game which plays over four chapters, and the chapters in my city were their own games that you played. So I'm wondering if this is meant to be, you know, you can play one chapter or you can play all four, or whether the four chapters essentially means that's the entire game, is it takes place in four chapters. I'm not sure how they're structuring that. I, I'm inclined to think it's not a legacy experience, and that four chapters is just their way of saying there are four main phases to the game. I don't know. It does say that each chapter has three rounds. So it, I don't know if each chapter is a game of three rounds or if you know the whole game is supposed to be 12 rounds. That's what I'm unsure about. We'll find out more as it gets closer or when we actually get our hands on it. But regardless, the My City concept and building your own city that's unique over time and different from everyone else's, it seems based on the look of the, the way it, the box art looks, it has some similarities to Cartographers. So Cartographers is a roll and write where you're sort of mapping out your city. It looks very similar on the cover to the, the, you're drawing different buildings and stuff onto it. So I'm not sure if this is going to be sort of like a mix of Cartographers and My City mashed into one. I love both those games, so I'm very open to that. There's a lot, there's enough things that I'm excited about that I would include this on this list, and I'm definitely gonna be following this and trying to get my hands on it as soon as I can, um, as soon as it releases. But again, cautiously optimistic, there is a chance it just doesn't you know, scratch the same itch that My City did. I'm not expecting it to necessarily have to be as good as My City, but it would be really great to have a like even light legacy roll and write experience that I could play with some people here and there and introduce. So um, I'm excited because it has the My City brand on it. I hope that it lives up to the original uh, and the potential there. Um, I think it could be really good. I'm excited to find out more about it though. Next up uh, is a game called Risk. Shadow Forces. So there was a game called Risk Legacy, and I, and I don't want to say it was the first Legacy game because I might be wrong on that and I didn't do my homework, but I know that it was one of the first Legacy board games, if not the first, uh, even before Pandemic Legacy came out. And that sort of led into this, you know, Pandemic Legacy, which started this whole Legacy, you know, I don't want to say fad, but it, it, this, this yeah, it kind of was a fad but it, and is, but, you know, is there's some great games being produced for it. I think sometimes the word fad is associated with something that is overrated. Not all of them, I think, are overrated. A lot of them are fantastic. Um, so Risk Shadow Forces is a, a Risk Legacy follow-up, basically, um, and it takes place in the future, in 2050. Um, again, I didn't play Risk Legacy, but I did play a lot of Risk uh, growing up. So my dad was really uh, big into Risk, so I played with him, and a really good friend of mine, um, uh, is also into Risk. And so the reason this is on the list for me is that one, um, I have people in my life that would absolutely, that absolutely love Risk and would be super interested in a legacy Risk experience that every time we, you know, hang out or play again, we can keep, uh, you know, moving our campaign forward and experiencing a changing board of Risk. Um, and I also just love legacy games. So those two things together is making this one that's now my radar. I, I thought about going back to Risk Legacy 
um, a few times, but because it was one of the first legacy experiences and I've played so many since then, I'm wondering if taking that step back to the first one, it'll feel not dumbed down, but it'll feel like some of the things I have enjoyed from current legacy games just weren't, you know, a part of the conversation yet back then, whereas this one is coming into play after having all these other games taken for inspiration from. So. Uh, it mentions some of the things you can expect. There's going to be sealed envelopes. There's not a lot of them. It says there's only going to be four sealed envelopes, um, but we also don't know what that means, how many things are in an envelope, you know, how much each envelope changes the game. Uh, it, that could be more than enough. Um, there's also a sealed container, which is exciting. It might be new pieces, who knows? Um, and it says you'll uh, write on your game, you'll mark it, you'll put stickers on it, you'll even throw away parts of it. And it says that every game will change your future game, obviously what we'd expect, but that because the way Risk works with, you know, competing nations, all this kind of stuff, that basically, its histories, its cities, its factions, how they are all fighting is changing every game too. So I have people in my life that are going to be thrilled by the sound of that. I'm going to be excited to, you know, revisit Risk in a brand new way. Um, it looks really promising. The box art looks really, really nice. The pieces look really, really cool, little miniatures and stuff like that. So I'm really excited about this. Um, again, I feel like if you don't like Risk, this is not something that's on your radar, but if you grew up playing Risk or you're just a fan of Risk or you really loved Risk Legacy, this is one you want to be aware of because hopefully there's going to be sort of an evolution, all that stuff that came before it and something that does all the things better based on all the other games that's now taking inspiration from. So lots to be excited about. Again, it's three to five players. So if you're looking for a two player experience, this is not for you. <laughs> uh, you're wanting to, again, Risk is also just better than more Play, player, maybe not the more you play with, but you definitely want to, I would say I've had the best Risk games when it's four players, for instance, compared to three, but still a great three player game. Um, either way, um, really exciting that we're getting a new version of Risk Legacy. I can't wait to sort of jump into that genre with Risk now. Next up is a game called Dungeons, Dice, and Danger. Uh, so the reason, one of the main reasons this is on the list is that it is designed by Richard Garfield. So Richard Garfield uh, is one of the designers of Magic the Gathering, um, as well as Keyforge, two games that I absolutely love, obviously, and I love uh, card games in general, and he has a really, really good way of uh, tackling card games and seems to have, you know, uh, you know, a lot of experience he's bringing to the table, so he knows how to do them right. This is not a card game, uh, and that's one of the things that intrigues me, is that it is a roll and write. Um, I love the roll and write genre, but I love the roll and write genre when they find new and interesting ways to tackle it. I feel like we've all played roll and writes at this point, and a lot of them, you know, the mechanics are the same with either a different coat of paint or different, you know, things you're doing with the dice. But when they're able to do something that's just a little bit different, you know, whether that's, you know, in instead of a roll and write, it's a flip and write, or, you know, or a flick and write, or whatever, like, I, I at least like the ambition to try this genre approaching a little bit differently. Um, I don't know a lot about this, know whether that's what they're doing, but because Richard Garfield's attached, it has enough of my interest that there's going to be some interesting things that brought Richard Garfield to the idea of wanting to do a roll and write. The the theme all right away fits for me. Uh, I'm a huge fan of like the fantasy themes, dungeons, you know, things like that. Um, dungeon crawlers. I love that genre. I love that theme. Um, this is obviously has it right in the title. We know it's going to have that. Um, and even in the description, it says you're gathering your courage, packing your sword and rolling dice as you journey through the realm in search of treasure and glory. It's a roll and write game uh, where you explore deep, dark dungeons filled with treasure. treasure. So that's right up my alley and infested with monsters, I should have uh, mentioned. So right up my alley in terms of, terms of theme. The designer behind it has me super pumped. Um, and roll and writes, again, are just a really, uh, one of my favorite genres. So uh, especially if you're wanting to play with people that, are, you know, um, are not a game like hardcore gamers or, you know, people who play board games all the time, I feel like Roll and Write is a good genre to introduce them. Um, and something with this theme might also be a way to introduce people that nor don't normally like the Dungeons and Dragons-esque theme or the dungeon diving theme into a genre or into a theme like that with an easier concept like a Roll and Write. So a lots, that are lots of reasons why I'm excited by this, but the main one is Richard Garfield's attachment. I'm just really curious to see what he's going to do with Roll and Write and if he's actually included any elements that you can see that are, you know, brought over from his card games that he's associated with. So really, really cool uh, looking. Again, we don't have a lot of information. It is slated for 2022 uh, and I'll be following it very closely. All right. Uh, the last one we're going to look at is uh, a game called, it's actually three games that were announced, but because I, I, I don't want to include all three and have to talk about to the two that we don't know a lot about, I'm going to focus on the first one that's coming out and this is Wayfarers of the South Tigris. Tigris? Tigris? God, I, I, every video I do, I have to mispronounce something. Um, so this is from Garp Hill Games and Shem Phillips. Um, 
they have done a whole slew of games that are sort of part of the same series, where like uh, Architects of the West Kingdom, Paladins of the West Kingdom, uh, Viscounts of the West Kingdom. There's also Raiders of the North Sea. Uh, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch that are of like this genre, and, and I think there's the trilogy of the West Kingdom ones, uh, and now we're going to be getting a trilogy of the um, South Tigris. I think everyone is like something of the South Tigris, um, and this one's Wayfarers. So I'm excited about this because I wasn't, I actually wasn't huge fan of I, I only played architects of the west kingdom i wasn't a huge fan of the game as a whole but i was a fan of some of the, the things it did and i still really really want to go back and play viscounts because there's things in that one specifically that i'm really really attracted to and want to try out but the description of this one um sounds really really cool and some of the things it's doing are reminiscent of some yeah, again, even a little bit of cartographers in there. Um, in, in the sense here, I'll, I'll read some of, the, of some of it so you guys have a better idea. But it says, uh, points are primarily gained by mapping the land, water, and sky. Players will also gain points from updating their caravans, by gaining inspiration from nobles, and by influencing their three guilds of science, politics, and trade. So I like the concepts of what I'm hearing, that you're mapping the realm. I like the idea that you're like... You, the, all of us are con like contending to be the first ones to potentially map things in the world. I like that as a concept. I like that as a sort of like backdrop to what we're doing um, and the, the influence of the three guilds and, and how I've seen other games utilize, you know, th that you have these different levels of influence tracks and what you're trying to do is something I've always enjoyed from games. So I'm curious to see how they're going to tackle it. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, mechanisms that are listed here that make it seem like it's going to have a lot of similar things to the West Kingdom series. Like it lists worker placement, it lists tile placement, Placement, track movement, set collection, area majority. There's a lot of things going on at play here. So it could be a game that suddenly all of a sudden becomes very messy with all the different genres is trying or uh, mechanics is trying to juggle. Or it could be an instance where it's each one is is you know sort of married very elegantly with each other, and we get bits and pieces of different mechanics that work together really well. So. Uh, I'm intrigued enough to include it on the list. Again, I might not have been the biggest fan of Architects of the West Kingdom, which is the only one I've played, but I, I enjoyed it enough to want to come back to the series and continue to try out more in that series. I know Carlo has Hadrian's Wall, which is not part of the same series, but is from the same publisher. I'm interested to try that as well. So it's on this list to just see. I'm hoping that what happens is, is that this new series of games does something different than the West Kingdom series. It isn't just retreading the same ground. I would imagine that it's going that's going to be the case. Otherwise, why do a whole trilogy of games just to tread the same ground that the West Kingdom's uh, uh, games have already tread, right? I'm hoping that they've learned from those games. They're adding improvements. They're trying new things like Viscounts out of the, I think it was the Rondell that it had. I'm hoping that there's going to be a bunch of new stuff and that's going to be interesting to explore for me. Um, I, I like the artwork. I, I am a fan of still the designer, even though if I like that game, the West King didn't um, resonate with me quite as much. I could appreciate the design uh, and what was going on and how well it was thought out that I'm really interested to uh, to check this one out myself. So this one is coming out in 2022. I don't have the names of the other ones in front of me. Um, I think it's, oh, Inventors and Scholars of the South Tigris, I believe. Uh, those are coming in 2023 and 24, I believe. So we're going to have a bunch of these for a while, uh, but the first one is next year. And there you have it. Those are seven brand new games that I'm super excited about that are coming out either next year or beyond into the future. Um, let me know in the comments which of these games you are interested in. Maybe there's some that you didn't even know about that now that I've told you you're adding them to your list. Let me know in the comments. And if, if there's any games that you think I you were expecting to see on this list based on what you think I like, uh, let me know in the comments as, comments as well. Maybe I just missed some of these. I'd love to hear some of the games that potentially are coming out that I don't know about or just to hear which games are on your guys' radar. So thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it. If you would if you want to keep up with all our videos, consider subscribing to the channel to get notifications when we post new videos. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.